If you're a fan of strategic base building, pixel art, and Vikings, you're going to want to stay tuned. This is Sons of Valhalla, a game that combines all of those elements into one big happy tactical adventure. Well, maybe happy is not the right word. Pick up your bows and swords and let's find out if this one ends up in victory or if there will be a defeat on the battlefield. Before we venture down the Bifrost, I humbly ask of thee to partake in the indie game spoils over at patreon.com slash I dream of indie games. Follow us for free or become a patron to net yourself early and ad free content, an exclusive podcast, discord access, and even free games at some tiers. Your community is waiting for you. In Sons of Valhalla, you play as Thorald Olavsson, a viking that is given a second chance at life to seek revenge on the enemy that destroyed his village and captured his beloved. You'll You'll journey through gorgeous pixel art landscapes on the path to England, all the while recruiting and leading your men through brutal tactical combat and fortifying your strongholds. You begin with a brief tutorial where you're gifted what I like to call the Utility Belt of the Gods. This belt can be equipped with runes that grant you special abilities and enhancements that will aid you in combat. If you perish in combat, you'll be forced to sacrifice one of these runes to the gods as punishment before returning to Earth to complete your quest. That is, unless you opt to play the game on easy mode, which I would strongly recommend to those less familiar with this style of gameplay, or players that are looking to get a feel for the combat and systems before diving in head first. Once you're back on Earth, the tutorial continues, teaching you how to recruit swordsmen and archers into combat, how to source wood and fish, and how to command your men. Basically, you're going to want to craft and upgrade your base buildings as much much as possible and maintain as many men as possible so you don't have to do all the dirty work yourself. These men can be told to follow you, to attack, to stay back, or to form a shield wall, which for as important as the game told me the shield wall was, I hardly ever used it throughout my gameplay. What can I say? I'm a going swinging kind of gal. You can also filter your commands to only address specific types of soldiers. For example, you can tell your melee fighters to charge into battle, while your archers remain perched high atop a watch tower primed to attack any enemies that storm your base. That's really all there is to commanding your army, the different classes of soldiers you choose, and the equipment you craft for them is up to you and your preferred strategy. I personally really enjoyed throwing the stronger brutes like the blacksmith and the berserker into battle to steamroll pretty much everyone in their path, peppered in with a few shields and archers for good measure. As for the actual action in combat, you'll have a sword that can perform a light and heavy attack, various projectiles including arrows and a javelin, and a shield which can be used to block oncoming attacks and arrows. These arrows that hit you or your shield do stick, which can leave you looking like a porcupine if you spend long enough in battle. There's meat to heal and mead to restore stamina, a basic dodge roll, and with that you can take down pretty much any enemy or tower that stands between you and your beloved. Only you can decide how active you want to be in combat. Some Sometimes it makes more sense to send your men in while you stay behind, crafting additional weaponry and using the loot collected to upgrade stats. Other times it makes more sense to be an active participant to complete the task faster or use more of a strategic approach. Another important element that comes into play here is your utility belt of the gods! You'll find runes from various sources that will enhance pretty much every aspect of gameplay from archery and combat to health and stamina. You only have so many slots on your belt and, at the beginning, some are locked and require a rune socket to add more space. Once your belt is full, you'll really need to be strategic with which runes you pick up and which ones you toss aside. Finding a new rune that is epic or legendary does add an element of fun to looting the many base camps you'll encounter that I quite enjoyed. Sons of Valhalla does at least attempt to add variety to your experience with some different gameplay variations. At the end of each location, you'll face off against a boss and progress the story. Then there is some stealth, albeit not great stealth, thrown into the pot to stir things up as well. Perhaps most importantly, however, you can pet the dogs. I know this is a selling point in and of itself for some folks. In seriousness, though I didn't necessarily love all of the gameplay variations, I appreciate the thought behind keeping things fresh and interesting at least. Honestly, the fundamentals of gameplay are solid and surprising 
seemingly addicting, I genuinely found myself getting into Sons of Valhalla. Unfortunately, there are a few things that held me back from enjoying this title to the fullest, so let's not beat around the proverbial bush any longer. This game has its flaws. First of all, it's great that the game seems to autosave fairly frequently, as pausing the game often ended in the game crashing entirely after a few minutes of idle time. This is an issue that I imagine will be addressed fairly quickly with a patch, but it happened at least three times, so I do feel it's worth mentioning here. Then there is the issue of enemies that you are unable to hit for some reason. These enemy forces will remain firmly on screen, sometimes with health and stamina bars, sometimes without, but nothing you or your comrades can do will send them to the grave. They just stand there, menacingly. Your soldiers will continue to attack them if you do not command them to follow you instead, forever swinging at these unreachable foes. While it won't prevent you from moving forward, it is deeply unsatisfying to just leave them there. Then there is the aforementioned stealth that comes across as thrown in for the sole purpose of adding gameplay variety, forgetting to actually make it fun. There's some really lovely music in Sons of Valhalla, full of strings, wind instruments, and drums, with tracks that shift and change as you move through different environments and changing weather patterns. Battle music is hard hitting and heart pumping to match the intensity of combat, while the soothing sounds at your home base leave room for the construction sounds and joyful uproar from the mead hall. I do have to admit that the sound effect that plays each time you recruit a new soldier reminds me of that one scene from Finding Nemo with the Ring of Fire. Please tell me you know what I'm talking about and reassure me that I am not, in fact, completely losing it. Voice acting is pretty solid, as are the sound effects, but I'm not sure it always fit the visual style of the game. The character pixel art for the humans and gods makes them all look a bit juvenile with very rounded soft features that don't quite fit the image in my mind of a battle-weary viking or an immortal god. The landscapes and backgrounds, on the other hand, are genuinely impressive. There is some fantastic use of moody colors, layers, and textures that make each environment feel unique, especially when paired with the changing weather and the day-night cycle. I also loved the lighting and shadows that gave these scenes the illusion of depth. I briefly tested Sons of Valhalla on my Steam Deck, and while it works, it definitely takes a hit in terms of frame rate and overall performance. It was struggling a bit, even without too much happening on screen, so while it is playable, it's not the optimal way to experience this title. Overall, once the kinks are worked out, Sons of Valhalla is going to be a game that really appeals to base building tactics fans. It does do a fair bit in attempts to keep gameplay fresh, including switching up characters and mechanics, implementing boss battles, and adding new types of warriors, weaponry, and enemies as the game progresses. I did also enjoy being more of an active participant in the combat than your standard base building strategy game. While this might not be my usual style visually or mechanically, there is enough good here for me to award Sons of Valhalla the bronze genie lamp of approval, but that title comes with a strong word of caution. I would wait for for a few patches before diving in, as the frustration of game crashes and glitches can really detract from the experience, at least at the time of this review.